Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void and a cheese compilation for November 2022. Let's get right on into it with a match between Adopir and Hyper One here on Tropical Sacrifice. Dopside gonna be Adopir. I have no idea what that's trying to say. And in the bottom left, we have Hyper One. So it's gonna be a PVT. These two races have the most available cheese. Out of the three races, Zerg has Proxy Hatch, Spawning Pool first, and I think that's about it. So, let's see here, Hyper 1, <laughs> a little bit of a worker battle here between Hyper 1 and a Dub Peer. <laughs> it's a Gateway's first opening, and it's a Proxy Rax from Hyper 1, at least I assume that is the case. Thanks very much to my screeners this month, Jim, Somicron, and Sniper Monkey, for screening all of the cheese sent to falconpaladin at gmail.com. The subject of cheese. There we go. Proxy Barracks here. The probe says, aha, I have an eye on this SCV. He is not making a proxy barracks. <laughs> that was a pretty smooth move going right through the bushes there with zero visibility from the probe. This submission was chosen by all three of my screeners, the only one that was true for. Hmm. Oh. Oh my, oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> Uh, we've got a concussive shell rush here from Hyper One. And just so close, so close to scouting it, a dub beer. Ah, oh, that hurts my soul. I don't even main Protoss, and that hurts me a lot. So look at this. We're making an adept, you know, as you do here. Hyper One, maybe going to try to wall off this front. Probably should. Although, I don't know if Marauders show up, the adept is probably going to stay home rather than trying to. Get over here and try to kill workers. I don't know. The adept's not going to be very good in this situation. Yeah, look at that. Concussive shell. Second barracks coming in. This guy just hanging out. Adept. Oh, the adept, yeah. The adept is actually checking. The adept is really checking for cheese here. Ah, I really respect it, man. Oh, and then a bunker in the wall. Hyper One, you are filthy. Check out Hyper One's YouTube channel. Link in the description. He's a crazy, crazy dude. Map maker too. Got a couple of his maps selected for the last Team Liquid map contest. Anyway, uh, so the bunker's not coming up because the SCV got taken down. Nice. Focus on that pylon. Depowering the warp gate upgrade, stopping that, and this gateway's not powered. Oh my gosh. So neither of them are doing bonus damage to the other, which is hilarious. Bring another SCV in. You have two, right? Well, maybe not. Oh, the concussive shell is so good in this situation. Okay, shield battery comes up. Shield battery overcharge real here. Try and, can you reach that? Oh my gosh, Marauder range is literally insane. So he's like, well now, me being outside doesn't do me much good. Stutter step kill, stutter step kill, stutter step kill. Dude, this is brutal. That bunker in the wall was so good too. And now guess what? Probes are really good against Marauders, but not if they're packed like this and can't get surrounded. Oh, Depowering the gateway there. All right, last... Last ditch effort here. Yes, these Marauders are probably going to die. But how many workers will the Dub Peer have after all is said and done? Ooh, actually, one side opens up. He's able to get out. Two more. Oh, keep running. Just run with these two. Let these two fire. Oh, this is so good. Come on. Get him. Get him. Oh, that one Marauder is not going to die. He's got nine kills. A Dub Peer is upset. And not, not, not GG out. In fact, Hyper 1 GG's and... That is that. <laughs> Brutality. 1,500 resources lost from our dub. Pier 375 for Hyper 1. That's 21 probes, 2 adepts, a shield battery, and 4 pylons for 2 marauders and 2 SCVs. Yep. I, again, StarCraft wins and losses often come down to teeny, teeny, tiny little things. Like the fact that he didn't scout. He tried. He even tried. He came down here and everything. He just needed to take a big of a detour here and then he would have seen it and I don't know shield battery sooner would be my guess in that situation maybe get a stalker out instead of an adept 
Ah, brutal. Such a tough loss there for a dub here, but that's game one. So good. Such a good cheese. I could see why it was chosen by Jim Somicron and Sniper Monkey. Really appreciate you guys. And again, if you want me to cast your cheese, send it to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. The subject of cheese will get you into December's, okay? Okay, that was game one. Game one is done in the books. Let's go to game numero dos. All right, going to be a PvP here on Moondance. Bottom right, it is Mac Winston. Top left, it is Art GS. Man, PvP, the cheesiest matchup in all of StarCraft 2. Not by a long shot, but it is the cheesiest. Mm all right, what's going on in the world today? Uh, finished up watching Andor recently. Andor was so good. Mac Winston says, PvP means one thing, fromage. Le fromage. Oui, oui, c'est ça. <laughs> uh, look at him throwing it out there, too. Mac Winston's like, what up? Remember cheese in this matchup? And Art's like, oh, yeah. You're right. I guess I should watch out for that. Thanks for the <laughs> reminder. But, yeah, man, look. I'm just going to say one thing about it. Andor. Oh, it is a forge first for Mac Winston. Wow, that's brave to talk about cheese when you're cannon rushing. If you're out on Disney Star Wars, you should watch Andor. And especially if you're out on Disney Star Wars, you should watch Andor. It is so much better than anything Disney Star Wars has put out. The Mandalorian is good. Andor is better, man. It has better writing. It's, it's just... Ah, the character work is amazing. The acting is head and shoulders above anything else Star Wars has ever done. Check it out. All right, Matt Quinson cannon rushing. Our guy Arts is like, yeah, you're right, cheese. I guess I'll just open double gate into cybernetics core then. Oh, and in my vision, there are cannons coming up. I want to see his camera view real quick. So, this is him. He sees a probe coming in. He sees, ah, a pylon has been put inside my base. That is not mine. Kel Horror. And also, by the way, dude, there's uh, there really is a cannon coming up down there. Just maybe you should send some probes down to take... You're just going to let that finish? Okay. Sounds great, man. Pile, or pile on number two is coming up, which Mac Winston... That's what. That's why he has two probes here. So this one gets all the attention, and it's going to die. But this one's very much alive, and this is the dangerous one. Because it's protected by another cannon. Oh, caramba. All right, well... Well, so this gas is dead. In production, we've got some stalkers on the way. Excellent. Muy excelente. More cannons coming up. This cannon's going to have to deal with a couple stalkers. Ooh, and a gateway here, too. Maybe just to mess with the pathing of the defending stalkers a little bit? I don't know. So stalker out. This is just so much investment into cannons. This is so all in from Mac. So he, why is he doing this one? These two are close. All right, well... I guess that one's closer to his Nexus and everything, but like... Oh, shield battery up. Shield battery overcharge. Kick it in. Kick in shield battery over. Oh, two shield batteries, though. Okay. Oh, these ones coming up. Oh, you're just focusing all your work on these cannons. When there are more coming up later, this might actually be a hold from Art. I love the shield batteries. I love that there are no active cannons in his base right now. Stalkers doing bonus damage to armored are super good. Uh, oh, yes. Probes are having... This is so much investment. I don't even... Shield battery overcharge is up. Look at it. Go! Can it hit both of these stalkers? Either way, it can hit probes as they come in. All right, man. More stalkers out here. This is looking like a hold from Art. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. This cannons are both going to die. No, are they though? Oh, a zealot came out from... Dude, kill the cannon. Kill the ca Okay. Cannon down, zealot up, whatever. No big deal. Okay, okay. But zealot chasing... Now you can fight him because he got a shield battery. Just wipe that guy out. Kill this pylon here. And then this gateway isn't powered anymore. And the zealots are less of a problem. And meanwhile, back home, Max got 22 workers on minerals and nobody on gas at all. More cannons coming up. Zealot in here trying to fight with probes, but there are three shield batteries now. Oh, my gosh. He had four stalkers. Okay, he's got two more coming in. Fight. Help the probes fight. Okay, now the probe count is falling for art precipitously. Ooh, I love that shield battery location. Shield battery overcharge again. 
My gosh, what is the cooldown on that? It's crazy. Mac Winston calls out a GG, and bam, Art's your winner? Art, so smart. We so rarely see a smart response to cannon rushes. It makes me happy. It makes me happy that's what we get. Look at that. He's like, okay, no big deal. We're going to get some stalkers out. We're going to throw some shield batteries up. We're going to pop shield battery overcharge when we can. We're going to hold this thing. And yeah, did we lose some workers? Absolutely. We lost six probes. But you know what? We've got an army. We have tech. And this guy, Mac Winston, does not. So that's it. Didn't kill a Nexus. Didn't kill enough workers to make this worth it. Mac tried a secondary cannon rush over on the right side, but that got scouted. Crazy. Like, just great, great display of defense there from Art. I mean, in fairness, Mac Winston announced that he was going to do cheese and then put a cannon in vision of the enemy right off the bat. So, I mean, Art saw it coming as much as you could. <laughs> so, anyway, good job, good job there. Mac Winston does fall. Appreciate, you know, consistent contributors to this thing, sending in losses every once in a while. It's good. It is just a nice, wholesome thing to do. I appreciate it. And we're going to keep this ball rolling with, guess what? More cheese. Are you kidding? We're on Moon Dance. Bottom right, Hyper One is back. Top left, it is Zero Air, who is a Protoss player. All right, man. So it's another concussive shell rush, maybe. But I think Hyper One likes to mix up his cheese. So I don't think it's going to be a concussive shell rush here. So if you want to support me, go to patreon.com slash falconpaladin. There you can support me for as little as $1 a month. But if you want to support me on a non-recurring basis, you can just hit the heart button, the thanks button down below this video. And uh, hit me up with a one-time dono, non-recurring. All right? All right. <clears throat> or, you know, PayPal. Falconpaladin at gmail.com is the address. So, uh, harassing. Harassing with this SCV. <laughs> Gas coming up. All right, all right. Hmm, maybe it is going to be a concussive shell proxy barracks. Are we... Is there another SCV out? Nope. Nope. Barracks up. Barracks up inside the main base here. The probe says, you harassed me. Now feel my wrath. Nice juke. <laughs> that was crazy. But I guess the probe was just like, I just want to scout anyway. Screw that guy. I'm going to come up here and maybe harass this SCV building a barracks. That would be, you know, some justice. Some street justice here today being... Ooh, and actually thought about throwing up a... Ooh, he's got a forge. He's got a forge after the gateway. Intriguing. This is getting interesting now. And now Hyper One's like, are we... Um, kill it. Kill the pylon. Kill it with fire. So it's going to be... Sure, there's a zealot on the way. Is he going to walk the zealot across the... Moon Dance has kind of a small rush distance. This might work out perfectly. Zero Air seems to sure know what he's doing, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, look at that. Cannon, cannon, cannon. Pow, pow, pow. Now, a lot more SCVs coming off the line. Killing this probe. It's not game winning. But, yeah, just too smart. Going to let these shields regen. Oh, never mind. Got juked and Oh, surrounded and killed. Nice. So, can you kill this pylon before these cannons come in? The answer seems to be actually, yeah. Pretty close, anyway. And one shot off, one shot off. <laughs> Beautiful. Zero Air says, all right, send the boys. Proxy Factory here from Hyper One. Send them. Oh, this Zealot shows up. There's one Marine out. And the SCVs are like, we can fight. We can fight, Dad. Let us help out a little bit here. Oh, gosh. The Marine's like, it takes 87 hits for a Marine to kill a Zealot. This is not good for me. And then make sure the probes can get in. And it's, I mean, it's not a worker rush. It's kind of a delayed worker rush. Oh, and he's trying... Oh, that he's going to protect his pylon. Okay, let the micro battle begin here. Zero Air spends his money on getting two pylons up here. These cannons are going to finish. This is an insane display. That zealot is dead. Okay, well done. The Marines... Oh, the Marine could have died too, but guess what we can pull back to now is cannons. Barracks can relocate. That's a saving grace of Terran in many a game of StarCraft. And then he recalls the probes home. And there is a Hellion on the way here from Hyper One in his factory. And Zero Air is like, that's what I'm talking about. You don't have a wall anymore. I'm going to kill um, a supply depot. Yeah, baby. Is there even a probe here anymore? I think he recalled all of them home. Which is an interesting choice. I think he could have leapfrogged this by leaving one of the probes here. 
but but at the end of the day, no. And his front door is open, and there's Hellions. Okay, well, micro challenge number two. What do you do when there are two Hellions inside your mineral line, and all you got is probes? Well, you run. Oh, that's a beautiful barbecue right there. That's another really good one, and that's a GG. Hyper one comes out on top again. In a crazy example of cheese. You think Zero Air was planning on cannon rushing? No. Because he made a gateway first, and then he's like, screw this guy. He harassed my probe. I'm going to make a forge and go cannon rush him. Delayed. That kind of gets shut down. But then a zealot shows up, and then another probe shows up and rebuilds, and all the probes show up. And there's a beautiful display there. And oh, we did. When was this? What did this probe get here? He sent it. Oh, he sent it. Okay. Did he see, hang on, did he see these Hellions? Hey, little probe. Okay, so there's the recall, blah, blah, blah. And then this guy builds a cyber core because obviously, and then this guy comes out. So we're gonna turn off the vision for Hyper One and this probe comes through. Yada, 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 does not see the Hellion. Oh, does see a Hellion run by. Although I don't know if he was looking at the screen at the time, which again is a big part of StarCraft. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he saw that. He probably, if he did, he probably would have walled this off. That probably would have saved his butt. If he'd seen that Hellion that he passed with that probe, he walls this off with a pylon. Maybe builds a cannon back here and just shuts down this Hellion stuff. And instead, the front door's wide open, the Hellions come in, and that's your GG. Yeah, he was planning on continuing the cannon rush, but... I don't know. There's a bunker here. It's a little too late. All his probes are going to die. He doesn't have enough money for a cannon rush to get all the way here. And plus, Terran can lift off his command center anyway. So once the economy of the Protoss is done, you're you're done. That's it. So pretty good one. Really, really good example. <laughs> Both players are cheese and always fun. So nine probes died to one SCV. A zealot died to two Marines. I mean, not a lot dead here today necessarily, but it's just this problem. This problem that Zero Air is dealing with. So GG there. Excellent stuff. Hyper One always brings the cheese. We're back with the Garmac Winston, bottom right of Cosmic Sapphire. It's going to be Eater. Um, nom, 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 nom. And on the top left, it's going to be Mac Winston, uh, who is a patron of mine. Add on patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for $10 a month. And if you don't trust Patreon for recurring payments, YouTube does it as well. And you're on YouTube, so you trust the platform, or you should, I guess. <laughs> Just hit the join button down below to join the super cool membership program for the Falcon Paladin channel. And you can support me there for as little as a couple bucks a month. It comes with a lot of emojis and a green colored name so everybody knows that you're a supporter and my undying gratitude. All right, man. So it's going to be a proxy here from Eater. Dun, da, 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 da. But yeah, Andor's great. Uh, oh, I watched the menu. Starring Anya Taylor-Joy and uh, Rafe Fine and Taylor... Oh, what's his name? I forget him! But he's Cyclops in the X-Men First Class movie. That narrow it down for you? Either way, you know, it was much better than I expected. I honestly went to see it because I love Anya Taylor-Joy and she has red hair. Like Queen's Gambit, Anya Taylor-Joy is like, mwah, perfecto. Mac Winston scouts this out, by the way. And he sees, uh-huh, million zealots coming my way. Oh, says Eater. So what you're going to do is fully wall off, build some cannon behind the wall, and have a good day. Why'd you go up there, says Eater. Ah, le fromage, says Mac Winston. Anyway, uh, just from the trailers, the menu looked kind of derivative and not super interesting, but I was like, I don't care. Went with my sister and her wife. We had a great time. It was a lot funnier than I was expecting. Like some dark black humor in there, and honestly, really surprising and very good. Like super good. So check out the menu, man. They're not paying me to advertise for them, though they probably should. Anyway, yeah, the menu. Anya Taylor-Joy. Ray Fiennes. It's... is good. All right. We got Gateway. We got Forge. We are going to... just All this could be is a million zealots, man. Three gate? Come on. Finally, a cyber core is coming in, but this early wave has got to be zealots. All right, well, Zealot comes down and says, Aha, two Zealots, okay. Gonna distract you a little bit so this cannon can finish, but, um, all right, well. Distract you distracted as well as you could. Ooh, the Zealot comes out. You gotta fight. Pin him. Oh, didn't pin him, but, uh, dude, you're... You cannot afford to hang out down here, man. Or, I guess he is. He's gonna hang out down here because getting up here with this cannon coming up is just the end of the day. 
Hmm, so now it's got to be a round of stalkers, right? It's got to be a round of stalkers, except he doesn't have any gas yet. So never mind, it's going to be more zealots. Ah, if this was more optimized, he'd have his gas taken by now. He could make a round of stalkers and really pressure pressure this cannon with like three or four stalkers. Kill it real fast. Open this door and then have a pretty good time with it. But yeah, Mac Winston scouted the heck out of this. Will this succeed? Nothing hurts more than when you scout out a cheese and don't respond to it well enough and lose anyway. It's just like, oh, right in the heart. Super death. Mac Winston says, you know what the answer to this is? A uh, Stargate. I'm going to make a void ray. I'm going to wander it back over here to Eater's base and I'm going to kill all his probes. Or like an oracle would do the same thing. On a shorter term basis, again, Void Rays don't have to have energy. Oh, here we go. So oh, that second cannon finished. Gosh darn, in the nick of time. And again, it's smart for Eater to back out here. I feel like he had a time before that cannon, first cannon finished to get some damage done, but he just decided not to. I don't know if that was the right move or not. Oh, look. Our guy Eater making a Stargate 2. Uh -huh -huh. Oh, shield batteries here just in case somebody comes over here and tries to murder it. Huh. Kipew, kipew. So yeah, robotics facility coming in. Void ray coming in from Mac. Let's see what the Stargate from Eater is going to produce here. The answer is... Well, he's got enough gas for an Oracle. But I think he's waiting for enough gas for a Void Ray. That'd be my guess. Second Stargate coming in. Gas, 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 gas. Mm, other shield... That shield battery. I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's too much. If that's overkill defensively. But yeah, there we go. Void Ray coming in now for Eater. But, guess who's here first? Prismatic alignment, go! Oh yeah, kill that, kill these pylons. Kill these two pylons with your shield, with your overcharge! Don't worry about the other stuff! I guess there's another pylon coming in. Fair, I guess. He's, oh, he's shield battery. Oh, that's beautiful. Maybe that is the idea. Okay, so he's gonna get his own voidery out. He's gonna have a shield battery for support for at least a second here. Hmm. Meanwhile, Eater takes another base to the bottom left, which is a gold base, mind you. It's the only gold base on this map, Cosmic Sapphire. So it's going to be Void Ray Battles. Okay, both players. All right, man. It's going to be two Void Rays sniping down an entire Stargate here. I think they're... I don't know. Thought about getting it, but... Oh, you're slow because of the prismatic alignment. Uh, there you go. You're zippy again. Shield battery will heal you back up to full health. Pronto. No big deal. Eater taking a second base down here. I love that choice from him. Void ray count is currently two to two. Production taps has one more void around the way for both players. It's really hard to do sustained void ray when you only have two gas available off of one base. Oh, depowers the Stargate. Oh, but snipes off one of the void rays too huge, but another void ray comes in. Okay, it's always nice when a unit dies, but a new one pops in to help you out. And this is just, oh man. Protoss dealing with proxy Voidery shenanigans brings smiles to Terran and Zerg faces because they're like, this is so stupid for us to deal with. It's nice to see Protoss have to deal with it too. Oh, shield batter. Oh, no. That was so close. That was so close. Man, okay. Well, it's just, this is Void Rays, man. It's Void Rays all the time here on Cosmic Sapphire. <laughs> what else is in the world? Oh, we've got a oh, got a merch store, Falcon Paladin dot store. Prismatic alignment. If you want a shirt and you want a hat, you want a hoodie. We've got two types of hoodies out there. It's beautiful stuff. Oh, um, Mac Winston walked. What? How did... How did he do this? Did he just walk them past these zealots? I think he did. And Eater's like, oh, I just killed my own Voidery. Did you? Did you really?
Oh, he did, because he thought... Because <laughs> he thought it was one of Max hovering over there. Oh, no. Okay, so that's why he laughs. And then he's just... There's just no micro here at all. Because all his workers are dead. And he's got a sneaky base down here, but he only has three probes left. And Dude, those zealots must have just walked. And look at these guys going back. I thought it was yours. GG. Mac Winston's your winner. Woo. Well done. I got to follow the journey of these guys. So I guess while we're doing that, thank you, Mac Winston, for sending that in. That was hilarious. And as always, the rules for cheese are... If you send them to me, let's make them seven minutes or shorter. If they're longer than seven minutes, there better be a good reason for it. And I'd say this had a good reason for it. The dude killing his own Void Ray, going into a final battle, these zealots showing up. Hilarious. Like, good stuff. Worth the seven minutes. The other rules are no worker rushes, unless it's something we've never seen before. The delayed, crazy delayed worker rush with cannon rush that we saw in one of Hyper One's games earlier, that counts. And the higher level your cheese is, the more likely it is to get cast. If you're a Grandmaster, we'll probably cast your cheese. If you're a Masters, also very likely. And it just goes on down the line. But, you know, obviously these guys aren't Grandmaster. So don't be like, oh, he only cast GM cheese. Not true. Not true at all. Diamond level, platinum, gold, we've had it all. We've had it all. Silver, bronze, I think, has made it through. Where the heck do these... Okay, look. It's like they magically appear. Oh, of course they did. Because there was a war prism. I'm such an idiot. Did, where did it go? Does it run away? Oh, it runs away real fast. Okay. So, you can't even see... Look, look you can't even see that on the mini-map. It's right on the edge, right in that darkness. And I can't see that at all. I'd have to look at it on the screen. Anyway, smart, 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 smart stuff there. Love that. Love that play from our guy, Mecca. All right. We'll watch this final battle again just for the fun of it. Bam. Just killed my own Void Ray. And there you go. Well done, Mac. Good response there. Love the warp prism follow-up. Genius. Genius play with your invisible warp prism that I still don't know where it is. Did he bring it back in? Oh, it's up here now. Okay, you could see that one on the mini-map. All right, that's my bad. Yeah, Eater trying to get this base. Never really established it. Kill zone void ray. Lost his economy. That was it. Cool. Let's keep this. Whoa, let's go. Oh, my goodness. Hyper 1 is back. We're on data C. Right side, Hyper 1. Left side, it is Tixed. From Jamit. I feel like I've seen this clan before. Probably in a cheese compilation or something, or maybe on a mid rank madness. Woo! Do, 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 do. I think Hyper One pinged his own map there a little bit. That's an interesting choice. All right, here comes the three SCV conga line. Conga, conga, conga. Conga, conga, conga. Conga, conga, conga. Uh, good old Muppet movies. Is that from Muppets in Space where they do the conga line? I feel like that's probably the same thing they've done more than once. A Muppet conga line is an interesting thing to see for sure. All right, man. So these three SUVs we've seen from Hyper 1 in the past are basically all about uh, blocking hatcheries. Because the Zerg player... Oh, well, way too late for that. Never mind. Uh, the Hyper 1's like, oh. Never mind. Let's go barracks. And let's go barracks. And let's hope... No, he sees it. Oh, this overlord. Uh, Gets lucky, man. I don't think he intended for that overlord to be able to check this. So here come the drones to shut this down. Can they squeeze between this at all? Urgh, kill that SCV building the middle one. No, can't do it. Dude, this is... Ugh, as a Zerg player, this is so frustrating. Quick, make a spawning pool. You gotta make a spawning pool, dude. He's not making a spawning pool. Make a spawning pool. Urgh, this is actually... This might work. Dude, he's constantly pulling the SCV off and putting it back on to put it in a position where it's not getting hit by these drones. But I don't think to kill that one. Okay, and then I think that's a hold. Here's the problem, though. Terrans can have these proxies fail miserably. <laughs> and win anyway, but never mind. Again, it's just a tiny, tiny bit. It's a tiny bit of scouting. That wins that thing for text. 
This overlord right here, look at him. He's not intending to check this area. I mean, this guy was. This guy's like, is there a bunker coming up here? No cool. This guy is heading out to look for proxies like in this area. And then he just catches the edge of that barracks for like two seconds. Right on the edge. Right on the edge. And then he's like, all right, well, oh, oh, three barracks, he says. Ha ha. Well, that was great. This, I mean, Hyper One did his best to keep these SCVs alive. Again, pulling them off, putting them back on to try to avoid. But once that and center barracks here. died, what the heck was that? And they're out of here. What is making noise in my head? And they're out of here. What the heck is that? I've what? And they're out of here. <laughs> I've never heard that, but this is the WCS 3.0 replay interface that I've always used. Why was there somebody saying, and they're out of here at GG instead of the normal thing? Hyper One, did you do that somehow magically? Feels like a Hyper One thing to do. All right, cool. Well, Hyper One loses, and again, ups, props, respect to Hyper One for sending in a failed cheese. This is basically a will cheese fail if you guys are lag TV fans from forever ago, which I don't know. Or There's got to be some of you guys out there. Anyway, well done. Well done, Tixt. Let's go into the next game and see if the out of here guy is back. We're on inside and out. First time today. Bottom left gonna be the Swiss. And in the top right gonna be JDGE. Otherwise known as Jadij. Yes, that's how you pronounce that. Alright, man, so two probes moving out here today. What are we up to, probes? Maybe some cheese from the Swiss. Uh, all right, so the Swiss and Hyper One are members of my Discord server. Let me know if there's not a link to do in the description to the Discord server. That's where I hang out. If you want to get my attention, go ahead and join the Discord server, okay? Okay. Ha. <sighs> what do we got? I don't know, man. This is interesting. Two probes come in. I guess he's not st and not stacking them. I guess I don't know. He's not building anything. Oh wow! So we got a lot of lost mining team time here from Jaduj, and then he throws up two pylons, loses one of the probes. For what the heck? So he blocks the pro. He messes with the pathing. What? What is this play? Is this? Oh, both probes die. Okay. So this is annoying. Whoa, whoa, Jaduj is upset about this. So it does mess up the pathing of the SCVs. Like these ones have to go around back. And when they return, they have to go all the way around. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whoa, Jaduj is extra upset. Jaduj, it's okay, man. He just built pylons in your mineral line. Like it's not even a cannon rush. I think you're still winning, says the Swiss. <laughs> Um, doesn't change you, says Jaduj. All right, well, double gate follow up with one gas from the Swiss here. Is he going to warp in zealots on these pylons? It's going to take him a while to get there. I don't know if they're going to survive long enough for them to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, we're going to make a barracks, probably throw up a factory next, like get a cyclone out or get a marauder out or something. At least make a marine. I don't know. A Reaper would be pretty cool, too. I'm thinking about it. And there's your Cyber Core. So, hmm. Dude, DT's slow warping in here would be hilarious. Again, the slow warp means there's more of a reaction time here from the Terran to see what's going on. But he's getting a factory. Again, getting a factory anyway. I just don't know if there's time for Warp Gate to finish here. All right. Well, are we gonna are we gonna get the thing? Yep, there it is. So there's warp gate, chrono boost as usual. 
Okay, we got, we're going four gate, two gas, one base warp gate here. Marine attacking. I don't know if we could see income here. Income. It is higher for the Swiss on minerals. Yeah, you know what? I think this is making a difference. Is it making enough of a difference that these pylons early were worth it? Boy, I don't know. How much Chrono Boost do we have? Did we save? We did! We have enough for more Chrono Boost! Hurry! The Swiss Chrono Boost! The Swiss! Do it! Chrono Boost! Oh boy. Not Chrono Boosting. Okay, well, made it adept back home. I really think warping in here would be hilarious. Oh man, but there's a siege tank on the way and there's stalkers being produced and the second pylon has exploded. So now the income is better. It's getting up there. 750. 800. Creeping into 800 now. These three mineral patches are annoyingly not super accessible. This guy's still stuck back here, so that doesn't help at all. And then expanding behind it is Jadouj. So, I mean, look. At this point, warp gate is... Done. There's not enough time to warp anything in, so I don't know. Meanwhile, we're doing this. We're doing double Stargate back here, shield battery follow up. Okay! Alright, the Swiss, here goes nothing. Like, well, my opening gambit, that was a lot of pylons. I don't know if it was worth. I honestly feel like if you're just gonna do this thing. Just do this thing. If you're just gonna proxy void rays and like shield batteries and stuff over here, then just do it. Maybe don't spend the 400 minerals on four pylons inside your enemy's mineral line first. Just a thought. You just, look at that. Ow, ow, ow. Just out of range there of that cannon. Okay, well, shield batteries heal up from damage taken by siege tanks as well as they do from damage from anything else. Stargate is quiet. The Swiss is considering his options here. Honestly, like, two Void Rays would just win because there are five Marines out. That's not enough. He's not making Cyclones. He should be making Cyclones. I don't think he knows there's a Stargate over here. Maybe he doesn't need Cyclones if we're not making a Void Ray. Uh, expansion coming in from the Swiss. <laughs> Yeah, he's very well defended against ground attack. There is... Oh, okay. So an Oracle. An Oracle gets in this mineral line. The Marines are a little bit late to respond to it. That could really cripple Dedigi's economy. Forge on the way from the Swiss. Cool stuff. Making a Twilight Council, too. Maybe getting... I don't know. DTs? So this is where Dedigi gets a full view of what this is. And he's like, ah. Alright. Well, let's move down with some tanks and Marines. A couple shield batteries aren't going to stop us. From doing that. Good job. Big chunks here. Big chunk here. Siege tank good unit. Alright, so Oracle out. Oracle needs to go. Yep. So these Marines are protecting the tank. They're not protecting this mineral line. And here comes the activation beam. Blah. And reaction time is the Marines are over here. And the Marines are all actually that's really bad. That's really bad. All right, well, um, yeah, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is, I've, ha I've been here before. Your SCVs all get murdered. Okay, your drones all get murdered. You were busy with something else at the time. That, that's it, man. Oh, still mad, Jadouj here. 37 to 13 workers, two base for the Swiss. Easy, Jadouj. And he apologizes. The Swiss is such a nice guy, truly a nice guy. He's teaching his kid to play StarCraft as well. So that's how you know he's a good dude. Super good, dude. All right. That was awesome. Well done there. Again, I'm not sure the pylons really were necessary to this whole plan, but this plan worked in the end. Ah, good stuff. Good stuff there. Protoss getting the win over the Terran. We've seen Terran over Protoss. Protoss over Terran. There is equality. Beautiful stuff. All right. Let's go next. We've got two more cheeses. Hit that like button if you haven't already. We're on Moon Dance. It's going to be Ajin versus Hyper One. Top left, that is Ajin. Or Ajin, possibly. And then we have Hyper One of the Hyper One clan. All right. So a PVT here on a Moon Dance. Hyper One is going to be the cheeser, I feel like. I'm not sure 
if he plays more macro or more standard, but Hypernal will probably show up in the comments and let me know which one that is. Anywho, this SCV is early enough to be scary and to be cheesy. Moon Dance is nice because you have this back area to put stuff in that most people don't check. I know when I play on Moon Dance, I'm never like, well, let's check that back area because it doesn't come to your mind because no other map has this, right? So you check this area, you check this area, right? Maybe you check over here, but my brain is never like, ah, yes, there's something happening back here. Anywho, Barracks coming up back home from Hyper One. Probably going to pro be a proxy fac back here, like a proxy fac starport combo. Drop a Thor into Ajin's base, always a pretty good time. So the pro comes in and says, okay, you're building a barracks inside your house. You've got two gas coming in, nothing too crazy, but does indicate probably a one base play. So expanding is not the greatest idea from Ajin. Is that going to happen? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't. If I was the Protoss right here, I'd be like, Ugh. No, let's just one base this thing. Let's get a shield battery in our mineral line. Let's maybe... Uh, right? Let's go Cyber Core. Let's get into Twilight Council or something. Maybe we can make another couple gateways. There it is. So there's that factory we're talking about. And... Oh, he does. He just goes right ahead and expands. Okay, man. I guess maybe the SCV up here from Hyper One made him feel like he didn't have to worry about expanding because Hyper One was going to do it. But guess what Hyper One's not doing? He's not building a command center with this SCV, folks. He's making a Reaper. Cool. Fact, I tell you, this is going to be a factory and a starport. And it's going to be a Thor. We've seen it before from him. It's entirely possible that's what we get again. But it's always fun. Always fun to see the strategy. Protoss has some good answers for it. Stalker's trade pretty well uh, against Thors. Again, they're bonus versus armored. Immortals do really well against Thors. Again, bonus versus armored. Zealots do good against Thors for cost because they don't take bonus damage from the Thors. Is he ping? Oh, check this action out. Check this action out. Ajin's going to go back. Oh, boy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The Reaper. Oh, and then the Reaper distracts Ajin from checking back there, which he still hasn't done. The Reaper has to get out of there because the Stalker's up. Oh, is he going to go check now? Go check now. He's like, no, we have to wait. We have to, oh my gosh, scouting and cheese. We know this. He's going to do it. Oh, good man, Ajin. Good man. He can't stop the starport from completing or this tank from being produced. Interesting. It's going to be a tank instead of a Thor. And then the Reaper's like, well, I could go back in. There's really nothing stopping me from going after these probes. That SCV's dead, but I don't know. Tank comes out. Getting big hits. <laughs> Because they're focusing on that tech lab. And he loses one of the stalkers almost instantaneously. Yo. Stalker does cut back in. Save the day. Did any probes die? I guess two probes have died. Nothing too insane. But is he gonna use the, he's got to use the medevac to spot for him, right? So he uses the medevac to spot... And hit this... Oh my gosh, look at the range. You can get four, five of these mineral patches are vulnerable to this. Oh, maybe you should unsiege a little bit, guy. Ugh, get picked up, get picked up. Ooh, gets picked up. Another tank comes out, says, Aha! Die! This is good. This is fantastic play from Hyper One here. Take that, you probe. Take that, you filthy probe. Ooh, kills the... Okay, kills one of the tanks. Oh, gets in that minimum range again. Shield battery says, cool. We're going to drop some mules for repair purposes. Can we out repair? No, but you actually have to repair something. He's trying to repair the medevac too. Oh, this is great. Actually, you know what? Like I said, stalkers are the answer. I was uh, The answer to Thor's, but not a bad answer to tanks either. So that mule dies. Another tank is on the way. This one's hiding. These stalkers are ready for anything to set up down here. Can they hit down here from there? I imagine they can. Oh, waiting for the medevac to come back in. Boost. Boost. Run. Get out of there. Ajin. Ajin is holding right now. His APM is 109. 155 from Hyper 1 on average. Liberator flies into Stalkerville. I, I don't know about the choice to make a Liberator here as it's dead. 
Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Ajin might actually hold this. Way to go, man. I like the plan. I do. I like the plan here from Hyper One a lot. This tank back here, Medivac spotting shuts down like half of the mineral income for the Protoss. But if it gets spotted and the Sockers do bonus damage versus armored stuff. Well, not much you can do about that then there, is it? Yeah, I mean, this tank has to flee, but the Medivac doesn't want to die. Oh, barely gets out of there. But we're pulling the boys. We're sieging up the tanks. We're using the boys to buffer for the tanks. Maybe repairing? The yes, repairing the tanks. And again, I do feel like Ajin's choice to expand here was a poor one. Oh, he's got Marines up too. Okay, army value 20 to 4 right now, but the income is zero for Hyper One. So... He's, uh, is he doing mules back here? He did leave some SCVs back home on minerals, at least. So he doesn't have any gas, but he has mineral income. De Dark Shrine is on the way from Hype or from our guy Ajin. But I think he just scanned it, and he's like, uh, I don't like that plan. Let's kill the Dark Shrine real quick. Siege tank. Oh, friendly fire splash is scary, though. Ow. Okay, so that gets canceled or killed. I'm not sure. There's an immortal out. Love the immortal play here. Tanks going after that robotics facility, which is built pretty close to the edge, and it dies. Now all we can build are stalkers and zealots, and this natural base is dead. Not that it really matters here. Yeah, you can't get close enough to these tanks to hit them with the SCVs. Taking down an assimilator, any damage you can take here, or do, is going to be good damage. And he tries to get one of the tanks. He does kill one of them with zealots. But the Immortal dies. There's only a Stalker left here. There's no money for Ajin. Ah, the brutality. The absolute brutality on display here from the Terran. It is 33 to 22 workers, but Hyper One's SCVs are not generally mining right now. Okay, one warp gate down. There's only one remaining now. He's getting blink. Which, ow, if you lose one of your stalkers for nothing, oh, tank sets up down there, Hyper One gets that win, and that one didn't have the voice. Blah, 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 these guys all die. Yeah, it's the normal sound. How did that happen? Is that on a tricky version of the map, maybe? Maybe it was the map version that was played on. Either way, oh yeah, this pylon, oh, pylon dying? Yeah, this pylon dying, which powers everything important. Okay, that was it. Nicely done. So Hyper One goes for the sneaky stuff on a new map. New idea. Love that a lot. And then when it doesn't work, he pulls the boys, makes some Marines, gets a couple medevacs in here, makes it happen with good micro on display there too. 176 on average here from Hyper One at the end of the game. That's a pretty impressive number. Honestly, so well done. That was very good from Hyper One. We've got one more game to go. Stick around. If you enjoy the cheese, maybe consider subscribing. I'm here five times a week with StarCraft II content. Moon Dance, final game of the day. We're back on this map. Hyper One and Drew. Top left, Hyper One. Bottom right, Drew. Hyper One did choose random for this game and spawned into Protoss. So, it is a PvP. Hyper One knows that, but Drew does not. Got a member of my channel and a subscriber for a very, very long time named Alchemy. And he says random players should be banned from the ladder. Because as a Protoss player, you don't know how to wall off if you don't know what the opposing player chose. Walling off high. Puts you behind. Against, uh, against Zerg, I think? I don't know. He explained this to me a couple years ago. But I don't know. Just being safe here is Drew. Forge on the way here. <laughs> and Hyper One. Did I say on the way for Drew? On the way from Hyper One. Hyper One is trying to, trying to cannon rush Drew, but he knows. Drew knows that it's Protoss from Hyper One. Scouting out the uh, forge here and ah <sighs> nice little space here for a cannon isn't it if this probe moved down a little bit would this probe be able to attack the pylon is there space for that oh cancels cancels the 
pile on over here. Cancels this one as well to get a refund. Oh my gosh. This is... This is a very high level cannon rush. Okay. So, the probes did kill the right pylon here. And there's just enough space for two probes to try to kill this pylon. Or this... This cannon. Oh, man. All right. So, how many cannons will... Or, how many probes will go down here? Got two. Got three. Got four. Oh, no! Only three pylon dies. Cannon dies. On the other side, though, Hyper One wasn't continuing to cannon rush on the bottom half of that mineral line. Instead, kind of sets up a little wall of pylons here. Okay, but that buys time for economy to happen here for Drew. If these probes go back to work anytime soon, that'd be super nice. Anyway, I love the pathing of these, what are they called? Plasma balls? They go up and up and over and up and over and up and over. Funny stuff, but no cannons are in range of the Nexus. Drew isn't dead yet. But actually, getting his gateway depowered, so he's not building, and he doesn't have any money for it. Yeah, he's dead. That's it. He's too much time with the probes off the line trying to kill this stuff. Didn't put him on in time. And that's it. Cannon rushing. Man, it's just tale as old as time here, man. Drew on the other side... I don't know what he's doing. He's gonna build a proxy gateway. Okay. That's kind of fun. But look at this. Defensive cannon from Drew is up. He's building a cybernetics core back home. A cannon over here from Hyper One would be nuts. But he's not following this up. Did he lose that probe? No. Did it go home? Where is it? Did he? He's exp Are you? Ex why would you expand? I don't know about that choice at all. I would honestly. I guess that pylon was in range too, though. Wow. Okay. So we hit another another pylon over here, and then I can't. Fair, fair points, I guess. Anyway, cybernetics coming up here for our. Well, Drew's got one. Hyper one. Working on it. Stargate. Shield battery. Assimilator for some reason for Drew over this way. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe he's worried about having to win a base race and having an assimilator up here would be nice. I guess, yeah, he's worried about army coming in here and killing him because he doesn't have much to stop that. But, I mean, you've already got built. He's expanding here. Okay! He's putting a base in Hyper One's base. Well, his expansion anyway. Oh, so Hyper One says, wow, Okay. This is some exciting stuff. Drew could maybe, you know, actually build something out of this Stargate. I think that'd be a good choice for him. He's not doing that. Um. Yeah, he cancels the natural and says, yeah, that's insane. Okay, he could have started a Void Ray. I mean, not forever ago, but like, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds ago? And in StarCraft, that could be all the time in the world. A stalker trundling down here. I don't know. Do you want to stay home, guy? Making additional gateways. Got a shield battery up. Again, another shield battery coming in here. This Void Ray is going to be very well prepared. Very well healed when it's time to come in. Is there another Chrono Boost available? There is not. An oh, almost. 48, 49, 50. Second Chrono Boost not necessary. The Void Ray has arrived. All right, man. So Void Ray... Versus Stalker with shield battery support. Prismatic alignment down one of these things. Prismatic alignment. Drew. Drew decides prismatic alignment. It sucks. He's not going to use it against the enemy Stalker or the shield battery. He's just going to use regular attack because, I don't know, maybe he's from the Wings of Liberty era. He's like, why is this not attacking in damage the longer the beam holds? Because that's what they used to do. They used to be the longer they held the beam, the more it charged up and the more damage it did. Is that what he's trying to do here? Why? Is he doesn't know. Okay. You know what, Hyper One? Beating someone who proxy void rays you who doesn't know about prismatic alignment is... It's, it's something. It's not quite what it is if you beat somebody who proxy void rays you and they do know what prismatic alignment is. This is... He's got... Look, Hyper One, you had to have noticed this. Right? 
You had to have noticed that he's not prismaticing you. Oh, this is disgusting. This is not how this is supposed to go, Drew. This is not how it's supposed to be. Oh, he's going to lose a Void Ray. Careful, man. You lost one of the shield batteries. That's out of energy. So, like, it's going to take a while for that to regen. What? <clears throat> Distress noises. <clears throat> Once again, my kingdom for a prismatic alignment. Shield battery overcharge is pop tier from Drew, but look. You can't, oh my gosh, you can't kill stalkers if your void rays aren't prismatically aligned. The only reason void rays trade at all, oh, he did it. He did the thing. And then he immediately pulled back, wasted the rest of the prismatic alignment on nothing and waited for it to wear off before he went back in. Dude, Drew. Drew, my precious, my sweet. What? What? Why? Yeah, and then, yep, prismatic alignment's up. Dead void rays is what that means. I don't care how many shield batteries you have. That's a lot of stalkers, man. GG! Hyper One knows how to deal with this. Stalkers! And Hyper One gets the win in the final cheese of the compilation. Well done! Yeah, I did... Uh, <laughs> The disturbing lack of prismatic alignment being enabled there in those void rays was crushing. Truly, truly crushing. So, um, yeah. <laughs> that was a match. I, I think it had maybe more potential to be a, a more interesting one. Where the Void Rays are actually popping Prismatic Alignment, and maybe they burn down this first shield battery, and future attacks are more effective. And these ones aren't here yet, but instead, he just the first Void Ray, or first, brrr, the first Void Ray was utterly useless. Is that fair? Man. Anyway, good job by Hyper One dealing with it. Anyway, I mean the Cannon Rush. He kind of aborted the Cannon Rush and won the game regardless, which is a weird way to win the game good on him scouting this out like i would not have scouted this out and then the void rays would have showed up and i'm like oh i have a queen that's enough to deal with like two void rays of shield batteries right no no it is not even two queens is not enough okay so gg well done hyper one and that's gonna be it from me so this has been falcon paladin coming at you with yet another edition of starcraft 2 a legacy of the void and a cheese compilation for november of 2022 Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.